Hello friends, and this is the third video in this series showing how erasing parts of photos can be helpful. And you can see links to the first two videos in the description below. With the first video showing what kinds of photos can be erased, and the second video showed the techniques that I used to erase parts of two photos to merge them together, to create a new one replacing the sky and adding a phone box to the image. And this week I want to show you how you can use the Erase option to create layers from a single photo, to be animated and create a parallax effect, to make it more interesting. And you may have seen this effect in TV documentaries, where they take an old photograph and make it move ever so slightly to add some three-dimensional life to it. So let's crack on. So first I'll add a new project. So from the startup pop-up, I'll create a new project and scene. And here's the two photos that I'd already converted to PNGs and named them more simply as I showed last week. And I'll be using the sky photo without any changes, so I'll just add that by dragging it into the viewer and choosing import. And I explained the difference between import and load last week. So check out that video for that. And now if we take a look in the project's extras folder, you can see the imported drawing there. And I'll leave this window open so you'll see that all the drawings appear there too. So now let's add the church. And I'm going to split this up into three or more layers. So for simplicity, I'll be duplicating this in the program. So to do that, I'll rename the file so it can be used like a normal drawing level. So I'll change its name to add dot triple O one. So that'll be drawing one from the level called church. So again, I'll drag that in and choose to import it. And now I'll click in the following frame after the church and I'll press the D key to duplicate this drawing. And you'll notice this is now listed as drawing number two in the timeline. And I won't change drawing one, so I can always take another copy of the original photo but if I hit save all, you'll see drawing two appear in the extras folder. And if you watched last week's video, you'll know that in that video, I erased the sky out of this photo. And as I don't want the sky in the photo this week, I'll use that one, so I don't have to erase it again. And this is a really important thing to understand. The scene only references the drawings on disk, meaning that if you replace the drawings on disk, the replaced drawing will be used in the scene when you next reload it. And this is really handy for editing photos in other programs outside of OpenTunes. So if I go into the extras folder of last week's project, and then just copy this image into the current extras folder, and then I'll rename this photo as drawing number two. So I'll have to delete drawing two first, so that's the photo without a sky, named as drawing number two. And then if I go into open tunes and then reload the scene. And hide the sky column. You'll see that drawing number two now shows the photo from disk that has got the sky already erased. So now I've got this photo. I'll click and highlight over the following three empty frames. And now if I press the D key, it'll duplicate drawing number two three times. So I've now got three copies of the photo with no sky. And it's on these three duplicates that I'll make my changes. So again, if I make a mistake, I've got drawing number two in this level with just the sky erased. So let's move them to their own columns. So I'll click on the column header and press the insert key. And that inserts a new blank column and I press it again, and a third time. So let's put drawing number three in this column, drawing four in the next, and drawing five in the bottom column. And now I'll delete the column that has the first two drawings in that I'm not using today. So now I'll just go ahead and erase the necessary parts of these three photos, so that on one, I'll have just the church, on the second, I'll have the trees, and on the third, I'll have the wall. So I'll just do that and be back in a second.
Welcome back. So I've taken about half an hour erasing the parts of these photos that I don't want. And if I show them one at a time, you can see what they contain. So at the very front, we've got the two trees. Then behind it, I've put the wall. Behind that, I've got the church. And then I've added this fill-in column, which is just a raster level with some basic colour fills just to fill in the gaps where I've erased parts of the photo that I don't want. And behind that is the sky photo that I'll use as a replacement sky. So now we've got our photos showing only the pieces we need, let's arrange them. And today I'll show you the easier manual way, and next week I'll show the built-in 3D view. But personally, I like working with the manual way, so let's do that. But first, it's important to acknowledge that if you're working with pieces cut out of a single photo, where they're cut out, there'll be a gap when you move that piece away. So where the wall is, there's a gap in front of the church. And to avoid the gaps, you can do two things. First, you can fill them in by painting what's missing, either in open tunes, as I've done in a few places, or by using the magic wand tool that you get in Photoshop and other paint programs. And the second thing you can do is to cover the gap during the animation. So instead of moving the wall away from the church and leaving the gap behind, you can start off with the wall in front of the church, there, and then bring it down to land exactly where the gap is. So you still get some overlap in the photo, but you don't notice the gap where the wall was originally cut out from. And that's what I'll be doing today. So let's add some animation. And first, as we're adding animation, it's best to set the default interpolation. And that describes the way that your columns animate. So from the file menu, choose preferences. And then from the animate section, change the default interpolation to speed in and speed out. And this gives a nice smooth transition from the photo being static to moving and then going back to static again. So let's close that. Now let's extend the drawings out for a number of frames by clicking and dragging in frame one to highlight all the drawings and then dragging this exposure handle out to the right. And we'll decide on the exact timing later, but for now, let's just give it a number of frames. And I want the photo static before it starts to move. So I'll move to frame six, say, to start adding the first animation. And then selecting the animate tool at the top here, I'll position the elements in their first position. Again, remembering to move the images away from their original fitted position. And you can do this by adjusting the individual position and scale values, or you can use the all option so you can move them both at the same time, which is much easier. So I'll choose that. And then to scale the photo, you simply click on the bottom left handle and then push it towards the center of the screen. And you can see around the outside of where the photo is, you've got this white line. And we're trying to place that within the red line, which is the camera view. So we'll place that roughly in there. Then we'll go down to the wall column and do the same thing. And then the church, the fill-in, and the sky I'll leave for a little while because we're going to do something special with that. So now I can zoom in to the view a little bit easier to see what's in the camera view. Or you can right click on the screen and choose fit to window, which fits the entire camera into the view. So then we'll just move a few frames later and set the final position. And I don't want a big movement here, so we'll just move them back to roughly their original position in the original photo. So we'll go to frame 12, just so it's a few frames along, and again, we'll adjust this timing properly later. So let's scale the tree larger, because we're trying to zoom into the church. The same for the wall, and then the same for the church, moving slightly larger there. And then you can just scrub along the timeline by clicking and dragging where the frame numbers are to see that movement or you can drag the bar under the viewer. So I want the movement to show a little bit of parallax as though we're moving forward towards the church 
and the trees are coming closer, quicker than the wall is and quicker than the church is. So we can see some overlap there. The trees don't move much, so let's just adjust their scale to be a little bit smaller at the start. And then you just continue to make any adjustments in the scale for each of the columns that you want to, to create the effect that you're after. And do be careful when you're changing columns to choose the column that you want to edit, to make sure you click on the drawing and not on the key itself. Otherwise that won't change the column that you're editing. So click to the side of the key to change columns to animate. And you haven't got to adjust the scale, of course, you can also adjust the position just by clicking anywhere on the screen. And that can help finesse your animation. And when you're happy with the movement, then you can adjust the timing. And there's a few ways to do this, but the easiest is to simply hold the control key and click on the keys to select them. And then as a separate movement, click again on one of the keys and drag them along the timeline. And I'll extend the drawings to last longer by clicking and dragging on the last drawing of each column and then clicking the exposure handle to expose those drawings for longer. So let's just hit play to see how long that lasts. So that starts a little quick. I'd like it to pause a little longer before the animation starts. So I need to move all the keys to the right. And the easiest way is to select on any one key, right click and choose select all keys. And I can click and drag all of the keys to the right. So I'll make it wait one second before the animation starts. Let's just zoom out a little bit. And I'll click and drag over the last frame and extend that for a little longer. And then I'll click on the last three keys while holding control and then move those a little later so the animation takes longer to play. So let's see how that looks. And I'd like it to move really slowly. So I'm going to keep adjusting these until I'm happy with it. And the final thing I wanted to do to give this short animation some life is to animate the sky moving from right to left. And this is one of the reasons why I replaced the sky with its own static photo. So first, let's change the interpolation type in the preferences dialog, animation section, from speed in, speed out to linear. And this means that the sky will move at a constant pace, so it will look more realistic. So we'll go to frame one choose the sky column and then using the animate tool I'll set the position slightly to the right and then I'll go to the final frame and move it to the left we don't want this to move too much so we need to be careful how we set this up let's see how that looks Good, that'll do. So again, feel free to keep adjusting these positions to get the timing that makes sense to you. So here we go, here's the final result. And now you can render this out and share it with your friends. Imagine having a moving clip from an old holiday snap. Or to use this as a cutout scene introduction for an animation. So why not have a go and animate your photos? And next week, I'll show you the 3D view where you might prefer to set up your animated layers. So I'll see you for that video. And that's a guarantee.